Hi, everyone, and uh, thank you so much for joining. I can tell you from my own personal experience that authoring a book and publishing a book is not only rainbows and unicorns. It is also uh, struggles like this. And so I learned along the way there are three important aspects and three important challenges to, uh, to take a look at. Uh, one is the create process. I needed the right tools to help me get started in authoring that book. And second is deploy. I found out there are lots of different ways to deploy or publish uh, a book. And lastly, maintain. I realized that a book is actually never finished, especially when we're talking about an IT book. So it requires continuous maintenance. And it's these three topics that also apply to the session uh, today, which is all about infrastructure as code for the Azure Cloud. So the key takeaway of this session is to use your bicep for all of these three topics. My name is Fake Bresson. I'm a product manager at Parallels, a Microsoft MVP and a published author. And I enjoy sharing knowledge about infrastructure as code to help you deploy resources in Azure in a more faster and more efficient way. So let's dive right in and start our bicep exercise. To get everyone on the same page, BICEP is a infrastructure as code language. It allows you to deploy resources into Azure using a declarative approach. And there's three important aspects that come into play when you uh, take a look at BICEP as an infrastructure as code language. One of them is that it's item component, meaning that similar to how the same source code always generates the same binary, the same template in turn will always generate the same environment in Azure. So it's consistent. A second, it is declarative. So that means that you basically state the end result of what you want to create rather than having imperative code where each line of code is processed individually. So you do not really care much about how things are deployed. You are focusing on the end result of what you want to create. And lastly, it is fast. So you basically provide your bicep file into the ARM engine that you can see in the diagram on the right hand side here. And the ARM engine will then transpile your template into an actual ARM template. And by transpiling, we mean taking one language, the bicep language, and turning that into another language. And then that ARM template is processed into the ARM engine and using the concept of resource providers that will lead into different resources that you want to create, whether that's related to storage or networking or Azure Firewall, uh, all of those resources. And if you have Experience with ARM templates, uh, you can consider BICEP as a abstraction layer on top of ARM and on top of ARM templates, basically masking away all of the code complexity and making sure that you have a good experience and also the ability to reuse your code in various different ways. So let's dive right in and take a look at step number one, which is that create step. So similar to how I needed the right tools to help me get started in writing that book, you need the right tools to get started with BICEP infrastructure as code. And that is VS Code and the VS Code extension. So let's dive right in and let me open up uh, VS Code to get us started. So I have a BICEP file here, which is called create.bicep, which is an empty file. And let's take a look at how to get started uh, from scratch. So basically what I do is I type the keyword resource followed by a symbolic name and I'm followed by the type of resource I want to create. So in this case, that's a storage account. I can easily specify the API version. I do an equal sign and say, give me all the required properties. So now I can fill in these things. Like for example, this is going to be bill 24. The location is going to be West US. And for the SKU, I have this nice drop down list to select the correct value as well as the kind. So as you can see, the um, the, the bicep extension that's installed in VS Code really helps me along in creating this template. Next, if I want to make this more reusable, I can create a parameter. So I do the keyword param followed by the name. So let's do, for example, location. It's going to be a string. And let's make that equal to West US again. I can now take this valuable, this parameter, and change it to make my template more reusable and have the location be a uh, variable. If I want to do an output, same thing, I could do output. I could say as a out, for example. Uh, and again, this is going to be a string. It's going to be equal to as a dot. And as a dot is now a reference to the resource that I declared before. So I can now say from the properties, give me, for example, the access tier. And that's it. We now declared our first storage account that we're able to deploy uh, in Azure. Sometimes, uh, and that's even a greater way, is also doing it the other way around. So if I open up, for example, 
the Azure portal here and go to any uh, random resource. This applies to any resource. I can open up the JSON view and I can copy this resource ID, which is the unique ID of my resource. I can go back into my bicep templates and anywhere, basically right click and say, insert resource, paste the ID, and within a couple of seconds, we should see the bicep template. So this is the bicep equivalent of, VJ, of the resource that we just saw in the Azure portal with all of the variables, with all of the properties, everything in it. So why is this interesting? This allows me to reverse engineer, to learn the code and start using bicep. So the more resources you create, the more you start to take a look at uh, the use of modules. And so modules is a concept that allows you to extract pieces of code and put them into separate module files. So let's take a look. So I have a subfolder here, which is called uh, modules with a main.bicep file. And similar, we have parameters. Uh, we have a resource being declared here. But we also have a module, which now starts with the keyword module, followed by a symbolic name, and then followed by a bicep file. So this bicep file is on my local file system. And then basically I'm saying to the ARM engine, any resource that's declared inside this module file, deploy that and make sure to pass these parameters to it. And by the way, deploy that inside this scope. So the concept of modules also allows me to deploy resources into multiple resource groups at the same time by defining the scope towards RG. And of course, RG is that symbolic name to the resource that we declared before. In this case, the module is on my local file system. And for some scenarios that might be ideal, for example, if I am the only one creating and working on this template, but let's say I want to share it with my coworkers or colleagues or team members. I can do that using a concept of Azure Container Registries, and that looks like this. So in this case, the module is now stored in an ACR inside the Azure Container Registry. And as a result, I don't have to have it on my local file system, but instead I point to BR, which stands for Bicep Registry, followed by a link and then followed by a version. So now I'm able to use this uh, module without having to have it locally with the ability to provide others access to it as well. In this case, you or the, or the uh, organization is responsible, of course, for maintaining that module and making sure that it's up to date and it gets, um, gets used in the proper way. The other way you could do it is also making use of Azure Verified Modules, or short AVM. So these are modules that are owned, developed, supported, and maintained by Microsoft. So in this case, you don't have to worry about the module itself. You can just consume it as a public module. So basically you do BR, which stands for uh, Bicep Registry again, but now pointing to a public module and a version to use this module. So as you can see, various different ways of using modules to reuse your piece of code. So the more resources you bring in, the more modules you start to use, the more probably you will have to have uh, some kind of visualization of what you are creating. And you can do so using the bicep visualizer, like you, as you can see in the upper right corner. So if you click on it, you actually get this nice graphical interface, uh, graphical overview of all of the resources that you, that you are creating. And as you can see, it's interactive. I can zoom in and I can drag these items around uh, to make sure that it makes sense to the need uh, that I have, whether that's documentation or explaining the code to someone else. So a really great way to, uh, to do that with options like zooming and reverting back to the defaults as well. The last tip I would say inside uh, the create process is um, decompiling. So if you have an ARM template or if you have experience with ARM templates, you probably have a repo of different templates you used in the past. And there's actually a really great way to decompile those back into Bicep. So basically right-click them and say decompile into Bicep. And within a second, I now have the bicep equivalent of this same file. If I would do a side-by-side -side comparison uh, and zoom out a little bit, not so much readable, but you can probably take a look at the difference left and right when it comes to complexity. Left is bicep, but none of the code complexity, where right has all of the commas and, and double quotes and all of those things, which makes it hard to read and to uh, maintain. So that was step number one, the create. Step number two is deploy. So uh, similar to writing the book, I needed the right tools, uh, but I also found out that there are lots of different ways to deploy that book. 
And so uh, it's the same thing with Bicep. There are lots of different ways to deploy a Bicep template. You can use the uh, Azure DevOps, GitHub Actions, uh, PowerShell, CLI, and all of those options. In this case, I want to take a look at a very specific one, which is actually also integrated into VS Code, which is the deployment pane. So again, let's switch to VS Code and let's zoom in a little bit more. And let's go to another uh, example here. So uh, nothing we have not seen before. So these are parameters. And in this case, I have three resources and an output that I want to deploy. So of course, what I could do is go ahead and take a look at the terminal here and say something like uh, AZ group create in order to uh, deploy this template to Azure. In this case, we're going to take a look at the deployment pane. And again, that's an icon in the upper right corner here. And if I click it, I want to get these things out of the way. I can start by defining the scope. So I have a subscription ID and a resource here where I want to deploy this to. And I can then change the parameters of this deployment. So um, I have the option to either pick a parameter file or actually change the parameters right from within this interface. So for example, if I don't want to deploy into West Europe, what is that I want to deploy to the moon? Let's see what, uh, what's going to happen. So the reason I'm doing this is that there are a couple of actions inside this deployment pane as well. One of those actions is validate. So if I click validate, of course, the template is now going to be validated against uh, the scope that I selected. And you probably guessed that um, it is, of course, not able to do that, right? So the message here is to provide a location. The moon is not available for this resource type. So let's change that back to the location West Europe. Do a validate again, and we can see that it now succeeded. This, so this already helps me into validating the template against the uh, scope that I defined. More interestingly, I can do a what if. And what a what if does is it takes your template with the scopes to see what is going to happen if you were to deploy this inside that location. Uh, so not actually deploying it, but providing you with some details on what to expect. So within a second or two, there we go, we have a result of that what if action. So we can see all of the resources, the changes, the properties uh, that are going to be changed if I am to deploy this. And lastly, I can also, of course, deploy it right from within here. So we're now contacting the Azure ARM engine to deploy this template with the parameter file and also see the end result. So here you go. These resources were affected by this operation. And here is the output uh, ID that we also uh, requested. So if I click on one of these items, that's really great. I can actually go directly into the Azure portal and take a look at the resource that was created by the um, by the extension here. So a really great way to interact with, uh, with templates uh, with the Azure Cloud. So is that going to replace all of the different ways of deployment that you have today? Probably not, because if you move to a more production-ready environment, you'll probably take a look at things like Azure DevOps or GitHub Actions, where you have a much more um, of a production-ready deployment mechanism, maybe um, incorporating some DevOps and all those things. However, the deployment pane is really easy for a quick action. If I'm developing something and I want to see the end result, I can validate, I can do what if, and I can deploy towards, for example, a staging environment really quickly from within the VS Code console. And then lastly, maintain. So similar to writing the book, I found out that a book is actually never finished. It requires continuous maintenance. And the same thing is true uh, for your templates, right? So you're probably not creating templates to use them once, you're going to reuse them again. And a great way to maintain all of those templates and, and resources is something that's called a deployment stack. So a deployment stack is basically a logical grouping of multiple resources that you want to manage as a uh, logical group as a whole. So a couple of um, advantages here. For one, it uh, prevents anyone from accidentally deleting individual resources from that stack. So it's another uh, way of securing those resources. It also enforces you to maintain those resources as a whole, as a logical group. And it allows you to destroy all of those resources at the same time, regardless if those are into the same resource group or even multiple resource groups or even multiple subscriptions. So let's take a look and switch to VS Code. I'll take a look at uh, example number three. 
Um, so again, I have a bicep file here with a couple of parameters and a couple of resources. So let's say that I want to have these maintained as that logical group. For that to start, I first need uh, the deployment stack. And since the deployment stack is just any other Azure resource, I can also deploy it using a bicep template, as you can see here. We're not going to do that now. We're going to take a look at another example, is that using uh, Azure CLI. In this case, I'm actually going to use this commandlet here to deploy a deployment stack. Uh, and that's what we're going to require at that commandlet, az stack group create. I'm going to provide it a name. I'm going to provide it a resource group. And I'm going to deploy it, um, that template file. And the template file is the file that I just showed you with the resources in it. And I'm going to say deny delete. And we'll touch upon what that means in just a second. So the end result, let me, uh, for the last time, switch back to the Azure portal and go to resource groups into the stack resource groups uh, here we have the option deployment stacks and as you can see this stack is already available here i deployed it earlier today and if i take a look we can see that uh, we have different resources that are actually attached to this stack from here i have a couple of options one of those options is to delete the entire stack we talked about so i have three options here one of them is to detach the resources uh, so not delete them. The other option is to delete all of the resources and detach the resource groups. And the last one is destroying everything. So that is removing all the resource groups and the resources at the same time. The other option here is to edit and redeploy. So I can, of course, go into this stack here and, and take a look at um, uh, detaching the resources, changing the properties, changing the templates and all of those things. Um, the last thing is that delete option, right? So if I go into this uh, um, deployment stack again and take a look at the deny settings, I can see that deny uh, delete is in fact configured. So what does that mean? If I go back into the resource group itself and open up one of those individual resources and try to delete it, let's see what happens. And we get this error message here saying that, yes, I do have the permissions to delete it. However, access is denied because of that uh, deployment stack that is configured for this resource. So although I am an owner on the subscription, I cannot delete it, right? So, and that's another security mechanism to make sure that you're um, redeploying those resources as part of that logical group. So how would you then remove that resource? If you wanted to, you would go back to the original bicep file. You would uh, take this resource remove it from this bicep and then rerun that template uh, deployment again. And it will take a look at the, uh, the differences between your template file and between the stack and make sure that everything is up to date again. So that's the last thing that I wanted to show you and that is uh, the deployment uh, stack. So really ideal to make sure that all of the resources that are logical grouped are also maintained and secured as the logical group. So with that, I want to thank you uh, for your attention. So this, uh, this demo was all about optimizing your Azure infrastructure as code experience with VS Code and with the Bicep extension in it. So we took a look at the create, the deploy, and the maintain process for that. So with that, my name is Frank Gerson, and thank you so much for watching. Uh -huh.